Hello everyone, and today we are going to be overclocking this RTX 3060 Ti from Zoltac. This is their uh, twin edge model, so it's a dual fan card. Not all that big, only one 8-pin, and it uses a reference PCB, so it has a 6-phase of 55-amp uh, DR MOSes. So it's not the best uh, 3060 that uh, you can get. But um, this is what is in my dad's new PC that he got uh, a while ago. And because he's currently on vacation, I thought why not borrow this graphics card a bit and see what it can overclock to. Um, and yeah, so this is Zoltec's take of a, I would guess, cheap 3060 Ti because it is just a reference PCB. The heatsink, um, is actually quite nice. You can see the fin stack goes all the way to the end here and the fans aren't all that loud. Um, so the heatsink is actually quite nice, um, but it is, um, if we compare it to my 1070 here, you can see there's quite a size difference and the power draw for these is roughly the same. This one has a slightly higher power limit, but um, this is also a custom 1070. Um, as for power limits, the default power limit of this is 200 watts. You can increase it up to 220. And this one has a default of, I think, also 200 and goes up to 250. Though it never really goes there. It maxes at like 220, 230. So, yeah. Um, let's put this card in. This is the first time that I'm running a 30 series graphics card. It's not too different from 10 and 20 series. They are pretty similar, except that this has... Um, the newest, most efficient GPU, and also uh, some very new GDDR6. Um, and yeah, so let's put the card in. I won't be taking it apart, sadly, because I, uh, even though there isn't a warranty sticker on this, I don't have a screwdriver. So I won't be taking the card apart. Uh, I will, however, be making a video later, um, because Tech Power Up has very good PCB pictures of the front and back of this card and I will be making a sort of small um, PCB overview for the card um, so you can get more of an idea what kind of card we're dealing with here. But uh, without further ado, let's put this card in the system and boot it up and see what it can do. So the card is now in the system. As you can see, I also got some new RAM. I also uh, volunteered, uh, borrowed my dad's RAM out of his system because it turns out that this is actually Hynix 8 gigabit DJR a chip that I've never worked with. Um, so I'm interested in seeing how, how that can, uh, how that will work. I don't know how the Maximus 9 Apex is going to handle DJR. It doesn't particularly like CJR, um, but we'll see what it can do. Um, but first we do the graphics card. So this is booting up right now and let's run some Fryer Strike on it. So the card's in the system. Um, here, by the way, are the specifics. So it is an LHR card because it's a somewhat newer one, uh, is of course a Zoltec. It does have Samsung GDDR6, which is very good. So I'm expecting the memory on this to overclock quite well. Um, and also you can see the power limit again, it's 220 watts. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna be running Fire Strike. So let's start a full stock run. Uh, the reason why I've decided to run Fire Strike is I've run some time spy on this. Um, because like time spy is a bit more appropriate since it's a direct x12 card. The problem being that time spy on this maxes out the power limit so much that the core clock just throttles down really really badly and it's kind of hard to see core clock improvements in that because it just always throttles down really low and uh, yeah so I prefer to run fire strike it is less heavy on the power limit and you can somewhat, it's easier to see uh, the improvements. So here's the card running GT1 now. This is at full stock settings. And we're already pretty, like pretty much right up against, yep, we're power throttling uh, against the power limit. Uh, we are at almost 1900 megahertz core, which is not too bad. Um, but in time spy this was way lower and in time spy it was almost touching 1700 uh, so yeah so even in fire strike the core clock jumps around quite a bit but it's not as bad as uh, it is in time spy so yeah i'm gonna be spending some time now 
uh, trying to figure out what the card is capable of, maybe see if I can somehow um, get a little bit extra power limit out of it. Um, and then I'll see you soon with uh, what the card can do. So here's our stock run result. Um, core clocks hovering around again the high 1900s, sort of touching 1900 for a bit, uh, but not much else going on. The CPU, my 8700K, um, uh, is at stock settings and the RAM is at XMP only, so the physics score isn't all that great. But the GPU score already looks pretty good. Um, this is actually quite of an outlier. I did a test run before and I was only getting 26,000. So I'm a bit surprised it's that good now. Um, perhaps that was because I had more programs open in the background, uh, now I think about it. But yeah, so this looks to be about 2,000 points higher than a 1080 Ti, so the card is definitely fast. Um, this is like, well, I don't think it's 2080 Ti level, I think a 2080 Ti is like 32,000 to 35,000, I don't think we're gonna get there. Um, but uh, yeah, this is like beating some 1080 Ti's already, at least if you look at the 3D Mark uh, results database. So. This is pretty good. Um, so, yeah, let's see how much more we can get out of it. So the card is now running at what I found to be the max of the card. So even though my power limit is at 110%, it doesn't really want to get above 200. So we are still very much power limited, sadly. So the core clock is jumping around. Uh, the peaks are rather high at 2100, but while running, it's... Well, in GT2 it's a bit higher, so it is above or around 2 GHz here, in GT1 it was hovering slightly below 2 GHz. The memory, as expected, did do quite a lot, so it's plus 1200. Uh, it does artifact slightly at plus 1200, but it does pass the tests. So, daily stable on this would be more like 1000, maybe 1100, but for benching 1200 does work, since it is Samsung. Um, I also maxed the fan speed to just keep the temperature low, to keep uh, temperature throttling to a minimum. Though I think power is the bigger issue here. And we will learn shortly, after the other tests complete, how fast it is now. Um, I don't actually know what to expect here. I think we're surely gonna be above 30,000, but I don't know if uh, we might cross over into 31, 32,000. Um, since the core clocks are, yeah, like around 100 megahertz higher than stock, the memory, of course, is quite a lot faster since it is Samsung. Um, but because we are so severely power limited, I really don't know why it doesn't want to go above, uh, like, 200 watts total. Like, right now, it is even hitting the power limit sometimes at way less than that when combined tests. There might be a thing that, like, there's a maximum power consumption allowed for the core or the memory, um, which would be bad. But hey, here we are, and yep, yeah, 31,146. That's, yeah, looks pretty nice. Um, yeah, so that's what the card can do. Uh, that is quite fast, like... I don't know if it's reaching 2080 Ti level, I think I think 2080 Ti would be like 32,000 and up, so it's not quite there, but like, for a reference PCB 3060 Ti that is severely power limited, that, that is a pretty good score, that is, yeah, quite a lot higher than my 1070 can do, my 1070 tops out at like 23,000, so this is topping quite a lot. Admittedly, it's two generations newer. Like, we have this ni nice, shiny 8 nanometer GA104 here. Um, but yeah, so as far as the graphics color overclocking goes, that's what it can do. Um, if we had more power limit, I think there would be a lot more core clock in this. Like, you can see the peaks, like 2085, at some point we also reach 2100. If we didn't have our GPU voltage that goes down due to power throttling, we, if we had a higher power limit, we could do the curve optimizer trick, where we would force our GPU voltage to stay at the maximum, which is 1.1 volts on 30 series all the time, 
which would help us keep our core clocks up. And then we might get something like 2100 working, just static without throttling down uh, because of power. But um, that's not what the BIOS on this card does, and it's not my card, I'm not gonna flash a higher rated BIOS on this, especially because it's also referenced PCB. The 655 amp DRMOS is, um, well, they could probably actually handle a bit more than 220 watts, uh, considering that GTX 780s came with a worse VRM than this. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be doing any BIOS flashing since it's not my card. If at some point in maybe a few years I get this hot card then handed down to me, then of course I will be doing some extreme overclocking with it. But as far as overclocking this 3060 Ti goes, um, that's what we got. Uh, memory pretty good, core clocks kinda sad, mostly because of the power limit. But uh, one thing that I liked is the temperatures. Not too bad, they could be better, um, but it it certainly looks pretty good for a heatsink that's only this big, so that's nice, I guess. Um, so yeah, that would be it for the RTX 3060 Ti overclocking. Uh, I will be making that video where I go a bit up into the PCB of the card and maybe talking about potential mods that you could do on this. So I have a little bit something to add to the video before it actually ends. Um, after ending the video, I did run the card a little bit more, and as you can see, I subbed to HWBot as well. And I actually managed to get a little bit more out of the card by optimizing the operating system somewhat and also enabling the LOD tweak. And this is uh, my Firestrike result. Uh, it says 2115 here because that's the peak clock, the actual, like the actual core clocks and memory clocks didn't change from what you just saw. Um, but I got a 33,751 GPU score um, through various means like uh, an LOD tweak and optimizing the operating system a little bit uh, and overclocking the CPU. Um, and yeah, so I subbed that to a chubby bot here as regular where it's not all too great because the card is very power limited. Uh, in GPU score for Firestrike, I am actually first out of four. <laughs> that explains why I'm first um, with my 33,751. And I also ran Time Spy, which again didn't really go that well. But hey, I have the sub now. Um, so Time Spy looked like this. My CPU scores a bit low actually because this config, like 5.3 and my 4400 16, 16, 16 usually gets over 10,000 points. So there was more optimization to be had in the OS. Um, but like, I don't think at this, like it's mainly about the graphic score. Um, the total score doesn't really, I don't really care that much. Uh, Cause like an 8700K is just not going to be competitive with a 12900K no matter how fast I make it. Um, so yeah, so here's time spy and um, Time Spice GPU score apparently exists too now. Uh, I'm I'm third there because right now there is a competition going on like Team Cup, and one of the categories is Time Spy uh, on a GDDR6 card. So more people have bothered with that one since the 3060 Ti is a GDDR6 card. Um, and yeah, so same setup you saw, and that's pretty much it. That's uh, what I wanted to say. So. I got, I got a little bit faster in the end for score, um, but the actual core clocks didn't change. It was all just uh, OS uh, tweaking. So yeah, um, now the video is actually over. Goodbye.